OpenAI is one of the fastest growing companies in the world, yet most people don't know anything about it. My name is David Andre and here are 20 surprising facts about OpenAI. Number 1. Despite its massive success, OpenAI has only 375 employees, which is kinda crazy considering just how much the company has been able to accomplish. This is what Sam Altman, the CEO, had to say. I know I'm not supposed to brag about OpenAI, but the talent density at this scale is mind-blowing and I don't think this has happened in the tech industry in recent memory. Now 375 employees is by no means a small company, but when you compare that to the number of employees at Google or Meta, you will see how crazy that number is. Number 2. Microsoft owns 49% of OpenAI and in total Microsoft has invested 11 billion dollars. But not only that, they are receiving 75% of all OpenAI's profits until those 11 billion are repaid in full. However, this isn't just a win for Microsoft. It's a win for OpenAI as well, since they get access to Microsoft's supercomputers. Plus, they have the 11 billion dollars to play with. Fact number 3. Greg Brockman is no longer CTO. It's actually Mira Murati. She's an AI engineer born in Albania. Murati started her career at Goldman Sachs, but then she spent 3 years at Tesla. In 2018, she joined OpenAI and recently she became the CTO, specifically overseeing ChatGPT. So if you have any errors, tweet at her. Fact number 4. Few years ago, OpenAI created a team of 5 AI bots that mastered the game Dota 2. These bots were so good that they could even beat the best esports team in Dota. The bots learned by playing 180 years worth of games every single day against itself. If you don't know Dota 2, this achievement might not sound that impressive, but actually the game is much more complex than chess or go, making this a significant milestone in AI development. Number 5. OpenAI isn't actually open at all. The company has turned mostly closed source. Elon Musk is the one who came up with the name OpenAI and as you might imagine, open was supposed to stand for open source, however that's no longer the case. One of the key reasons that OpenAI states for this transition is focus on safety because you know, putting these powerful AI models like GPT-4 to the public without proper guardrails could be considered irresponsible and unsafe. However, there is also another reason, Microsoft. When Microsoft invested into the company, they wanted exclusive rights of GPT-3 which at the time was the most powerful model. and open OpenAI gave it to them, marking the end of OpenAI being open source. Fact number 6. GPT-3, the model behind the free version of ChatGPT, actually existed for almost two years before ChatGPT even was created. This highlights the complex and time-intensive process of fine-tuning a model, which is otherwise called RLHF. Now the reason why GPT-3 wasn't such a massive hit when it was first released is because it wasn't easy to use. ChatGPT is super easy to use, I mean anybody, as long as you can use a Computer, you can use ChatGPT. But GPT-3 was only available through API and most people don't even know what API is, let alone how to use it. Number 7. Currently, OpenAI has 7 board members and they are not democratically elected. The names include Shivon Zillis, Matthew Mokari, Alejandro Cortufo, Jade Long, Kelly Sims, Helen Toner, Atlas Bengelo. Yeah, I definitely botched multiple of those names. Fun fact, Shivon Zillis is actually the mother of Elon Musk's twins. So, Elon might still have some influence over OpenAI. Fact number 8. Elon Musk cut off OpenAI's access to Twitter data because he felt the company wasn't paying enough. OpenAI was paying 2 million dollars a year to Twitter for access to the data, but Elon thought that 2 million wasn't enough. After the release of ChatGPT, Elon heavily criticized OpenAI, saying the chatbot was biased and could even lie. Since then, Elon has accused OpenAI of being a maximum profit company and he even signed the letter calling for a six month pause. Fact number 9. The salaries of the top AI researchers at OpenAI exceed salaries of even some professional athletes. Even when the company was a non-profit, multiple of the top researchers were making over 1 million dollars a year. Back in 2016, Ilya Satskever, the chief scientist at OpenAI, was paid 1.6 million dollars even though the company was a non-profit. But if you think 1.6 million is a lot, then listen to fact 10. The training costs of GPT-4 were over 100 million dollars, which is a significant increase from the training costs of GPT-3, the previous model, which were only 12 million dollars. Yeah, those supercomputers aren't cheap. But it's not clear how that 100 million is actually broken up. Some people speculate that the compute costs are only 40% of that, 
for 40 million and that the other 60 went to RLI chef and the salaries of researchers. Number 11. We actually still don't know how many parameters GPT-4 has. According to one report, GPT-4 is approximately six times bigger than GPT-3, which has 175 billion parameters, meaning that GPT-4 likely has over a trillion parameters. Experts agree that it's probably around 1 trillion, but nobody from OpenAI has confirmed nor denied that. Number 12. One of OpenAI's first successful projects was Dactyl. It was a robotic hand, which eventually learned how to solve the Rubik's Cube, marking a significant achievement in the field of robotics. Dactyl actually learned from scratch using the same reinforcement learning algorithm as was used for the OpenAI 5 Dota 2 bots. Dactyl showed that it is possible to train agents in a simulation and translate that over to real-world tasks. Number 13. Reid Hoffman, who is one of the original investors in OpenAI, recently stepped down from his board position. The billionaire LinkedIn founder said that the reason was to avoid potential conflict of interest, which was the same reason why Elon left, at least the official reason. Now I'm starting to think this is like a executive jargon for someone having differences with the other board members. So they just say, oh yeah, it was conflict of interest, you know. Let's look at what Reed said himself. By stepping out of the board, I can proactively put to rest any downstream potential issues for both OpenAI and all Greylock portfolio companies I've backed. Now, to be fair, he is the co-founder of Inflection AI, which is a different AI company. And I don't know if it's illegal or immoral to be on the board of multiple companies, but it's just weird at seeing all these people stepping down from the board member positions. Fact number 14. In November of 2022, the same month as ChatGPT was released, Microsoft, OpenAI and GitHub were hit by a class action lawsuit stating that the code that ChatGPT can create was illegally obtained from programmers. The person behind this class action lawsuit is Matthew Butterick, who is a programmer and a lawyer. He said that ChatGPT relies on software privacy at an unprecedented scale. Butterick then assembled a whole legal team and hit those three companies with a second class action lawsuit. The three companies in question asked the lawsuits to be dismissed. Microsoft actually said that the complaint fails on two intrinsic defects, lack of injury and lack of a visible claim, meaning the programmers weren't obviously injured by ChatGPT and there isn't any real claim, at least according to Microsoft. Fact number 15. OpenAI actually isn't a for-profit company. It's what's called a capped profit company. Now, this is a very unique and unusual corporate structure that you won't see anywhere else. Now, you can think of the capped profit structure more like a bond than an equity. Like if you own equity in a normal company, you can sell it at any time you want and it's for, you know, it's for you to make profit. Owning a bond, it's more like you're buying it to expect being paid back the same amount you put inside plus interest. But once it's paid out, it's gone. This unique corporate structure is designed to make sure that all obligations to investors and employees are paid out. And after that, OpenAI will become non-profit again. At least that's what they want us to think. Number 16. According to Ilya Satskever, OpenAI's primary key performance indicator, KPI, is the technical progress of their AI models. Now again, this doesn't just mean ramping up the parameter count. It means actually understanding the models and how they work. It means using better data and having more control, better predictions over how the models turn out. Because as Sam Altman said, you can tell how smart the models will be even at the beginning of a training, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Like imagine if you could tell how smart a child will be in its first year. I guess you can tell quite early on, but not in its first year. Number 17. OpenAI has stated that the age of easy scaling in the AI models has ended, meaning now it will be more about the data than just, you know, scraping more of the internet. Which raises the question, how will OpenAI get all of that data, and specifically high quality data? Don't get me wrong, larger neural networks will still continue to improve, however with that, the cost and effort to improve them will also rise. So one potential solution to this data problem is the concept of synthetic data meaning getting AI to create its own data. Because GPT-4 is already really smart. So you could use GPT-4 to create new books, new articles, maybe even new images, because it can process images. And maybe with some RLA chef or some oversight from humans, you could filter that, see, okay, this image is trash or this book is really bad and this book could be a bestseller. Now, if AI starts generating the data, which is what's called synthetic data, we could have basically infinite amount of data at our disposal, which would solve the 
the data problem once and for all. Number 18. Greg Brockman has publicly stated that Elon Musk leaving the company was a huge failure on OpenAI's part. He said this during his South by Southwest interview, which I highly recommend watching. Unfortunately, he didn't elaborate on this in the video, but I think it's pretty clear why it was a mistake to lose Elon, because Elon left voluntarily. And the main reason, the you know elephant in the room, is money. Elon is the richest person in the world. Now, he pledged to donate $1 billion to OpenAI, but in total he only donated 100 mil, because again, he didn't believe the company was heading in the right way, and he actually believed that OpenAI was falling behind in terms of AI development to Google. Now, there is a lot of, you know, speculation about the actual reason why Elon left. Some people say that it's just like he was overworked. He had Tesla, SpaceX, Solar City, the boring company. Like the guy is doing so much stuff. Other people say that he wanted to take control of OpenAI and become the CEO. But the others, like Sam Altman, Ilya, Greg Brockman, they didn't let him do that. And so he left. And with him, the money that he promised. Number 19. Now you might be wondering, how much money is OpenAI actually making? Are they even profitable? And how long will it take? to pay back the 11 billion that Microsoft invested. Well, according to an anonymous source cited by Reuters in December of 2022, OpenAI was projecting a 200 million dollar revenue in 2023 and the next year, 2024, they were projecting 1 billion dollars. Now there are two big ifs with this projection. It's from December, meaning ChatGPT was out only for a month and today it's much more popular than it was in December. So the projection is likely much higher than 200 million. And also, it's from an anonymous source, so who knows. Number 20. I told you ChatGPT used GPT-3, but that's not quite true. It actually used GPT-3.5, which is a better version of GPT-3, that used RLHF, which is Reinforcement Learning Human Feedback. Now, I know, it sounds complicated, but basically it's just people saying which answer is good and which answer is bad. So if you say describe a cat and it says cat is an animal that's usually a pet that's a pretty good description but if the second answer is cat is a predator that's in the wild or whatever you know that's not as good of a description of a cat as the first one meaning the person who's giving the RLA chef will choose option one and that will reinforce you know reinforcement learning reinforce gpt3 to give more answers in the style of the first one however there are also some serious downsides to RLA chef for example models that are raw, you know, the base models are exceptional at probability. Meaning, you can ask it, what's the likelihood of this fact to be true? And it says 70%. Now, on average, it will be 70%. But after the human feedback, the models become completely incompetent at guessing probability. Like, the research actually shows that the models become just as bad as humans at guessing the probability. Now, maybe there is some way to get, you know, both the benefits of RLHF and the benefits of the base models. But that's something that still needs to be figured out. If you learned anything from this video, then please subscribe. It takes 1.7 seconds.